Hey, 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 everybody, what is going on? Siri Love and Drive here, and today we're playing Entropia Universe. What we're going to be doing today is the 2020 Hunting Guide for Entropia Universe. So we're going to be going over everything hunting focused or everything about hunting that you guys need to know to get started so if you're a new player check out my beginner's guide first but this is sort of going to be the next step in that uh, sort of list of 2020 tutorials and the next one that you'll want to watch and full disclosure here this video is sponsored by none other than Mindark so shout out to them for helping me make this video so first off what is hunting it's basically when you take a gun melee weapon whatever it might be go out and kill animals when it comes to hunting, there's a few things that you really need to know. First off, with guns and anything like that, you're going to want to make sure it is within your level to use. So if we go to a gun like this, this is a starter weapon. You're going to get that from a trade terminal. If you go to view item information, you're going to see recommended levels zero. Skill progress is 100%. Recommended hit level is zero and skill progress is 100%. So this shows a few things, right? First off, there's two skills, two professions. You can find these over here, professions. There's two professions that you need to use this gun, ranged laser and laser sniper. So one's a damage profession, one is a hit profession. So you can see here, my laser sniper hit is level 31. My range, ranged laser damage is 27. I didn't quite skill up right, so that's why my skills are mismatched. We're gonna go over how not to do that. Actually, we can just do it now. If you don't want your skills to be mismatched, if you use a rifle and a pistol, that'll sort of fix things for you. Um, so basically use a rifle to shoot the mob when they get close enough, pull out a pistol. Everything's going to skill evenly, but it's going to take you longer to skill up in your sort of given classes because now you're doing four different professions at once. Anyways, anyways, don't worry too much about that. If you're a new player, if you're an older player and you're looking at this mismatch, the key is if you're mismatched with the pistol where your damage is too low, you can just pull out a rifle and use that and vice versa. Um, if your hit is too low, then you're going to want to focus on laser. If it's laser sniper hit, you want to focus on a ranged laser. BLP sniper hit, you want to focus on a BLP rifle. Sorry, a, 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 a laser rifle or BLP rifle. And then you get down into sort of the guns and that basically if laser pistol ear is lower then you want to fit, focus with the pistol but that, that's sort of how that works and how you can even those out anyways 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 let's get into this right so first off you can see this recommended profession level here we're looking at zero 100 percent zero 100 percent that's what you want skill increase bonus what this means is when you use this rifle you're going to get extra skills so this is either going to say not yet not anymore or like yes what you basically want it to say is not anymore if you're trying to be extremely efficient and save as many PEDs as possible, or yes, if you're looking to use a gun that's a little bit over your skill level as far as like if it's maxed out or not, but you want some extra skills when you're using it, so keep that in mind. Ammo burn, that's just how much burn you're going to use up. Attacks per minute is 44, so this is sort of if you're looking for DPS, that's what you want to look at. I wouldn't worry about burn damage or penetration damage. Just look at damage interval, damage max. So 3.5 to 7 is what this rifle does. You can see the range is 39.6. And what you're going to see here is this rifle has a bigger range than a pistol, right? So if we look at this pistol, you're going to see down here that range is 26.4. So the rifle has more range. That is key. We're going to get into that later, but just remember that. And then you've got hit ability, that's 10 out of 10, and critical hit ability, which is 10 out of 10. Tiers, weapons will tier up as you use them. So if it's a limited weapon, it's going to tier up automatically. So you can see, I, I thought this one might have some. Yeah, this one does. So this has one enhancer socket open. Enhancers are something that you can buy. You put them on the gun and it enhances one stat of the gun. Enhancers do randomly break. So if you're looking to be ultra efficient, ultra eco, it's very hard to calculate. There are some numbers floating around out there, but I'm not the expert. I prefer not to use enhancers. Um, but they do exist, that's something to keep in mind. If you need to do a little bit more damage or something like that, an enhancer might be what you need. Um, so again, here you can see my stats. These are actually boosted. The orange stats are boosted by an amplifier, an Omegatron A203, that's an amplifier that I have. We're gonna get into that just in a little bit, but first off, you can see all these stats here still maxed out. Now if we look at a gun like this, the EWE, 
for this gun, you can see recommended level's 25. Looking at my level, you can see I'm 31 and 27. So I'm above the recommended level. For learning hit period, it says not anymore because my hit skill is level 31. But for learning period damage, it says yes because my ranged laser damage skill is only level 27. And you can see the result of that right here down at damage interval max. The damage I'm doing, which is on the left, is 25.2 to 50.4 damage. The damage that this gun can do at max stats is 28.0 to 56 damage. So on the upper end of things, I'm losing about 6 damage per shot because I'm not skilled enough. And what you got to remember too is you're going to spend the same amount of money per shot. So this is a little bit less efficient than this number up here. This efficiency number says 56. In reality, because... I'm not maxed out, like my skills aren't maxed out, my efficiency is going to be a little bit lower. So just always keep that in mind, okay? Um, and then if we go to another weapon, so this is a weapon I might use. I'm probably going to use it. Someone gave it to me as a gift. I'm definitely going to use it. Anyone that gives me a gift, I'm going to use the gifts. Don't worry about that. But yeah, they gave it to me as a gift, so I'm definitely going to use it. And it's going to be good. It's going to boost my damage. Like my damage is higher than what I'm doing with this LR20. So if you want to compare the two, you can basically use this pin, so you can pin something, and then you can pull this out, pin that, now you can see next to next, side to side. The efficiency is higher, again, that's modified by this amplifier. Let's actually go ahead and detach this attachment so we can just look at the pure gun stats. So again, the LR20 has a higher efficiency, which means it's more eco, it's more efficient. And of course, that does depend on markup and percentages and everything like that. It does slightly a little bit less damage than this EWE, but again, you can see this EWE is just a little bit higher, but I'm going to be getting extra damage skills, which are pretty good, and then because I'm maxed out, I have that high hit level, my range and my hit and critical ability, those are all maxed out. Also, one thing to note, the AR Matrix it is a longer range than this EWE gun, this LC120, and compared to this gun, this sort of starter level gun that you've got, the range is a lot better. Look at this, look at this. This gun has a range of 39.6, this one 85.8. So always keep that in mind. As you get better and better, the range can go farther and farther. And the farther the range, it means the more time there is between your first shot on a mob or a animal in Entropia Universe and that animal getting to the point where it can hit you. So the more damage you can do between initially shooting that mob and that mob hitting you means the less decay and the less health damage that you're gonna take. Just keep that in mind. This, this is all important. It's all going to circle around. This is going to be a long guide, so stick with me here. And if you look at another gun, here we've got an LR25. So this would be the next level of gun that I would sort of want to use, right? Again, the efficiency here is pretty good. 63.6 is slightly more efficient than the LR20, a lot better than this LC120. Now, if we go down to the stats, though, you're going to see, even though, again, here, Recommended level 25, recommended level 25, yes, not anymore. But then we go down to the damage. And you can see here there's a lot more damage missing, right? The max damage, the stats are the same. This is why I use this gun, right? 28 to 56 is a max on the LR25. And on this LC120, 28 to 56, same amount, same like damage max. But if you look at the damage I'm doing on this LC120, it's 25.2 to 50.4. On this LR25, it's 21 to 42.1, meaning I'm leaving a massive 14 damage per shot on the table with this gun. And that is a crazy amount of damage to be leaving on the table. So, like, can't use this gun. I've got this gun sitting because I found a good price on it. Um, we're going to get it. We're going to get into that just right now. So, I found a good price on this gun. So, I've got it sitting in my inventory, and I figured it would be perfect for this guy. So, I went ahead and bought it. Now, one other thing we can look at is the market value. This is how much a gun's worth, how much the players are paying to buy this gun, right? This gun's selling for 117.73% for the day, 118.88% for the week, 119.32% for the month. A gun like this, this LC120, sells for 125%. So not only is it less efficient, it has a higher markup. If these scenarios were reversed and this LC120 was selling for 117% and the LR25 was selling for 125%, it might make more sense to use this gun just because look at this markup, right? There's such a difference in it. Maybe that extra like 10% markup or whatever it is or 8% markup is the difference between an efficiency of 56 and the difference between like 63. So maybe that makes up for it. So always keep in mind that even 
this efficiency number, no matter what it is, you've always got to consider that there is markup. And the higher the markup, the less efficient a gun actually is. The efficiency is compared to the TT price, but you've got to compare it almost to your, your uh, markup price because that's what matters. And then again, if we look at this gun, this LR20, you're going to see this is sitting at 117.62%. So these two, these two guns basically have about the same markup, but the efficiency on this LR20 is just a little bit less than this LR25, meaning the second I'm fully maxed out on this LR25, I should only be using this gun because it's more efficient, which means you get a little bit more damage per PEC spent. Speaking of which, if we're looking for damage per second, not damage per PEC, but damage per second, you can jump over here and you can see that damage per second. Um, and I believe this is based on my stats, isn't it? Let me check real quick. Oh, maybe it's not because this is a higher attack per minute. So this is actually just based on the assuming everything's maxed out, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can see with the LR25, I forgot to cover that. Rifles, every gun has an, or every weapon has an attack per minute, 48 to 51. So then if we go over here and we look at the damage per second, this EWE LC120 is doing 47.5 damage per second on average, while this gun's doing 44.8. So obviously, it, it all depends, right? And it depends what mob you're hunting for what sort of gun that you want to use. Uh, you can see this LR20 is way lower. Um, and just keep that all in mind, right? Because some mobs have a higher health regeneration than others. So sometimes if you have that extra damage per second, you kill the mob faster, it's less likely to heal when you're shooting it. And you can actually save enough to make that lower efficiency worth it. Every mob has a perfect sort of setup for it. And it's up to you as the player to figure that out and get as close to the perfect setup as you can. So that is just going over guns. That's what you want to look at. Even if you're looking at a pistol or anything like that or a melee weapon, it's all going to be the same, right? You've still got that damage per second, and then you've still got things like range and recommended level and sort of attacks per minute that really matter. Generally, pistols are a little bit faster shooting, but they have that l lower range. So a pistol is going to be very hard to engage a mob in right away, whereas a rifle, you're going to be able to engage from a little bit farther away, so it's a little bit easier. And then if you look at swords, you've still got the same stats here. My sword levels are not so high, so I don't have a really high level sword here to show you guys, but this is sort of a basic, uh, basic sword here that we've got. And you can see again, same stats are here, and if you look, you've still got damage per second. So that's a melee weapon. Also, you do have one more skill that I don't want to miss, and that's called that's called attack or mind essence, mind force. So you've got these nano chips and stuff like that, and they also do damage. They have a damage per second, they have a attacks per minute, all sorts of stuff, all the same stuff as everything else. And here what you're going to notice, my hit is higher than my damage, which means if I use this chip, I could sort of equal everything out a little bit faster. My recommendation, if you are new to this game and you don't know what you're doing, start off with rifle. The most eco way to hunt is you can do this. You go to L, you click this, and then you hit I. Now you've got your hotkey set up, you put a rifle here, and then you put a pistol here. And what you're going to do when you're attacking a mob is you're going to shoot your rifle, okay? And then once that mob gets within pistol range, you're going to switch to whichever gun does the best sort of damage per second per PED. And you've got to make that call, but whichever one that is, you switch over to that gun. So if it's pistol, I'm going to switch over to that. In my case, it's rifle because my rifle is just a lot higher skill. But if you're new, they're all going to be equal. So this is something to think about. <clears throat> so you switch over to whichever gun sort of gets you the most bang for your buck. Use that gun. Once that mob is down and it's about to die, you can switch over to a gun that does a little bit less damage. Because if you're shooting a mob and it has like, let's say it has one health left and your gun does 50, 50 damage, you basically lost 49 damage. 49 damage that you paid for with PECs because every shot costs the same. Whether or not you're maxed out on the equipment, whether or not that shot does actual damage, every shot costs the same amount. Basically means the lower you can get that sort of damage, this overflow, that damage that doesn't get used on the mob, the more eco, the more efficient that you are. So people who are extremely eco, extremely into efficiency, they're going to be sort of switching to a lower tier weapon to just finish a mob. And they call that your finisher weapon. Also worth noting here, you can shoot like this. You're not using any bullets. Unless you target someone or something, you're not going to use any bullets to shoot. So that is hunting in a nutshell as far as weapons go. Next up, we have armor. 
Okay, so I get this question a lot. Armor, how does it work? Basically, what armor does is it's something that protects you. Each mob has different stats. You're going to have to go to Google, look that up. There's, uh, there's an Entropia wiki you can use. And um, the way it works is you've got acid, burn, cold, whatever. This is all the different stats that your armor protects against. I'm using ghost shin guards. These are pretty, like ghost is a pretty good armor set overall. Uh, we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later. But here you have all the stats that it protects against. I've got plates on this, so it's protecting against a little bit of additional sort of hit, right? So this is everything it protects against. You look at how much damage a mob does and how that damage is split. So a mob might do 50% cut, 50% impact, which means if it's attacks for 30, it's probably going to be split. 15 cut damage is going to be done to me, and 15 impact damage is going to be done to me, which this, this armor would take completely. This armor would then decay because every time armor is hit, it decays. And also with armor, the way it works is each piece, each sort of section of your body has a different percent chance of getting hit. So a harness is going to get hit the most. Something like gloves or feet might get hit the least. So I, I don't know what the exact, exact percentages are, but let's say like ghost takes 50% of the damage. The ghost harness, that's the thing that takes the most damage. So if you're looking to slowly upgrade armor, let's say you've got pixie, the first piece you probably want to buy is a ghost harness unless you can find a deal on something else. Ghost armor has a higher markup. Personally, I prefer unlimited armor. Some people do like limited armor. And the difference between unlimited and limited, this applies to guns too. Limited guns, when you get down to the like end of them, they're done, right? So we go over to this repair terminal. You're gonna notice this gun doesn't go in there. Items cannot be repaired. It can't be repaired because the type is L, which means limited. Some items though are unlimited. So these amplifiers, which actually cost a lot, are unlimited, which means I can dump them into here and you're good to go. The difference is when you buy an amplifier, you pay a TT plus price. So I pay 127 PEDs extra for this A104. But what it means now is I never have to pay that markup, that extra again. Whereas with this gun, I'm always gonna be paying a 17% markup. So it's important to have a balance and keep that in mind. If, it, if something's extremely efficient and it's unlimited, it's gonna be extremely expensive. With armor, that is not the case. Limited armor is more efficient generally than unlimited armor. You've got to take into account the percent though. So if an armor is marked up, let's say 2000%, it is probably not any better than unlimited armor. But if it's marked up to 100%, limited armor is always, always going to be better than unlimited armor. At least that's sort of the rule of thumb. There obviously are like unlimited armor types that are extremely expensive and better, but we're not going to cover that. So yeah, if, if you're looking for armor and you adhere to the serial overdrive philosophy, the way you're probably going to do it, the way I'd recommend doing it, and the way I've seen a lot of people do it, is they get their pixie, pixie armor. You get adjusted armor, I believe, for graduating from a mentorship. So if you're looking for a mentor, if anyone's interested, I, do, I can mentor you. All the advice I have is coming through these videos, but you know, if you can't find anyone, you can come to me. Go to mentor register, type in Daniel. And then Outman, O-U-T-M-A-N, just hit enter. I've got caps locks on. That's me. You can just hit request. I'll take you as a mentor. We'll go on a short, short team hunt. And then when you graduate, you'll get a gift. I'll also get a gift. If I get anything cool, I'll split it with you. So you'll get a gift, and that's going to be Pixie Harness, right? The Pix Pixie is sort of the first armor that you want to use. If you look at the stats on this, and then you compare it to something like this, you're gonna notice a ghost armor is a lot better, but pixie armor, because it takes less damage, that means pixie armor is actually gonna take, it's gonna decay less. So pixie armor is a little bit cheaper to use, and for, for a lot of animals, for a lot of monsters, mobs, it's, it's, it's pretty good, it's just as efficient. So like, why not use it in that case? It's actually better, I'd say. Um, but, you know, as you get to higher level mobs, so if I'm gonna take on something like an Amubu, those things are gonna hit hard, so I probably need Ghost. I might even need these plates on to take them, especially because my gun isn't quite the best gun to use for them. But if I'm gonna be killing something like, let's say, Atrax, Pixie would work. And a lot of mobs, generally what I find is mobs that don't shoot you, don't hit you, they're gonna be doing most likely cut and impact. Of course, there's some that do cold, some that do burn, some that do all, all sorts of other stuff, but they're basically, basically going to be doing cut and impact most of the time. So Pixie is a very good one because it has high impact and it has high cut compared to all the other stats that it has. 
Um, then after that, what you can do is you can get these 5B plates. These have a little bit less markup. They're 32 PEDs per plate extra, which I guess that's a little high, but not, not as much as like a full set of ghosts or something like that, I think. Um, so you can get these plates and then you put them onto your pixie, which gets it just a little bit better stat. So first, pixie, har pixie adjusted armor, full set. That's what you want. Then you can put these plates on it, these armor plating. You put those on. Now you've got Pixie that can take a little bit more cut and impact damage. And after that, you're probably going to want to upgrade to Ghost Armor. Um, there are some other armor types out there, but a lot of people just don't use them anymore. Shogun used to be something a lot of people recommended, but not anymore. Vigilante is a really good armor if you want to take on bots. So bots are these things that shoot you, and they basically do penetration and burn because they're shooting. That's what a weapon will do. So Vigilante is a good armor for that. And if you're fighting things that shoot you, you're probably going to want to want want some 6a plates because these also protect against penetration and burn so this vigilante armor can take quite the beating because if you look at the stats on this 25 penetration 26 burn that's sort of your basic like mid-tier armor right your mid-tier hunter who's been at it a while like me is going to probably have vigilante and ghost armor unless they're going with some of these limited armors i'm not a big fan of limited armors as you can see from my inventory over here in the left I enjoy collecting full sets, and you can't really do that with limited armors because if you have a full set, eventually it's going to decay, and then you don't have it anymore. Whereas with unlimited armors, you get it, and you've got it forever. So that is my take on armor. Of course, there are some really good limited options, and as you get to a higher level stuff, when armor starts costing 10, 20,000 PEDs, of course, you're going to go with, with limited armor because... 1,000 USD, 2,000 USD for an armor set is ridiculous when you can just spend maybe 500 PEDs and get a limited armor that's the same equivalency. It also decays fairly slowly, and unlike unlimited armor, limited armor as it decays will not lose stats. So what's going to happen, let me see if I have any that's decayed. I've got all my armors healed fully sort of uh, maxed out, and the reason for this is because if these armors are not at full TT, full trade terminal value, their stats suffer. You're taking just as much damage, right? Like you're you're paying for the eight protection, but they're only going to be doing like 7.9, and then it just keeps dropping from there as the armor gets more and more damaged. So if you don't have a lot of PEDs, if you don't want to have armor sets that have all your money just trapped in them, like I've probably got thousands of PEDs trapped in armor sets, then limited might be the way to go because those stats do not degrade as limited armor takes damage. So that's armor, okay? Next up, we've got mission. Or no, actually, next up, let's cover amplifiers. I should have covered this before, but real quick, in Entropia Universe, there's these things called amplifiers. If you look at an amplifier like this, an A203, it costs quite a bit. It's they, one hasn't been sold in the last month, but it did sell for 600 PEDs. I actually paid over a thousand for this, so I lost money on this. But the efficiency is 84.4 percent. So generally, amplifiers have a higher efficiency. So if you have an amplifier, what you can do is you can put it on your gun, and now there's going to be a two-fold thing here, right? Now your gun does more damage, and in addition to that, you also have a higher efficiency. One thing to remember with amplifiers, though, is if you put an amplifier that's too high of a level on a gun that does not do half the damage of the max. So uh, let me let me explain this here. This is going to take a little bit. Let me just let me get the info here. So the way it works, right? You can see the damage that this amp does is 15. 10 burn, 5 penetration, 15 damage. If your gun, if this minimum number is not half of what that amplifier does, the amplifier won't have that full effect on the gun. So if I put this A203 on this Somato Anoxo, it's only going to amplify the, the damage by 3.5 instead of 15. So let's go ahead and put that on. Let's view the information. And now all of a sudden, if you look at the damage, it didn't go up by 15. It only went up by like a little bit. And the reason for this is you always want to make sure your gun does half. Your ampl you want to make sure that your amplifier basically is like going full on and just fully, fully increasing the damage that that gun can do. Um, so real quick, let's detach it here. So 3.5, and you can see it only adds 5.3. So you want to make sure that basically if you've got an amplifier that does 15 damage, your gun's doing a minimum of like 30 damage, right? That's just how you want it to do, or a maximum of 30 damage, something like that. 
just when you when you equip it, pay attention. I forgot the rule. I should know it. Uh, but you can see that's like maximum effect right there. Maximum effect. So there we go. And sorry, it's a maximum number, I guess. I, w I was a little bit off there. Um, so half the maximum, I think. I think that's where we're at. Sorry about that. I'm just a little, little bit uh, crazy on that one, I guess. Uh, a little bit off. Sorry. Anyways, anyways. As far as amplifiers go, if you're using unlimited, you want to go from an A101, 102, 103, 104, and then those two series or 105 amplifiers good. Generally, the 203 has a little bit higher efficiency than something like the A1, A104, and the 102 has a little bit less, even, even more, well, even more so. Overall, though, amplifiers are very good because they're high efficiency, so if you're looking for eco, if you're looking to do the most damage per PEC, an amplifier is great for that, and if you're looking to hunt a little bit harder level stuff, an amplifier is also great for that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you've got these two things, a scope and a bullseye. Uh, if you look at what this does, it just it, it's a modification percent. It gives you a little bit of a skill bonus and a skill modification. But overall, I, I don't know too much about amplifiers and scopes. I don't think that they're worth putting on. I got these because I was just playing around with it. There's a little bit of a skill bonus. They decay when you use them. Their efficiency is not too bad, so it's not the end of the world. But overall, if you're not looking to spend extra PEDs and you're not really interested in skilling up a little bit faster or anything like that, I'd skip these guys. Just sort of, you know, know they exist, but you don't need to do anything with them. All right, so we've got all that covered. That's a lot. Next up, we've got missions. Back in the day, you used to come to these things. They're called hunting challenge terminals and get missions. That's no longer. The way it works right now is you get this thing called a codex. And what a codex is going to do, if you go to N, you can also type in codex. I have it hotkeyed and click here. But what the codex does is it gives you missions. Anytime you attack a mob, <clears throat> sorry about that, you're automatically going to take that mission. So I must have attacked the defender once, so I've got 1.3% of my defender mission completed for I'm rank four and have 51.8% on my Aatrox and even more on Amubilax. So every time you kill a mob, based on that mob's maturity, its level, and everything like that, your progress is gonna increase. When you get a rank, you go right here to this codex, you click claim reward, and then you can pick from one of the rewards that you wanna claim. So if you look at this right here, you can see for getting this mission done, I can get 1.5 PEDs, five, four PEDs of a few different skills. In my case, I'm gonna go inflict range damage because that counts towards that damage skill that I'm looking to get. If you're wondering how much certain skills count towards professions, so this is skills right here, K, P for professions. Um, if, if you're wondering how much certain skills count towards professions, go to Entropy Wiki, Entropia Wiki, and you can look it up. They have a breakdown, everything like that. It's, it's, it's a really great resource. I'd recommend using it. All right, so real quick, we've covered weapons, right? We've covered amplifiers. We've covered guns and armor and everything like that. But there's a few other things, I guess. So a lot of people ask me, what guns should you be using? My recommendation is for missions. There's these things called daily missions. What you're going to find, you can come here, claim daily missions. You're going to have three daily missions. These give you tokens, OK? So this one basically gives you a list of where these mobs are located. It says you get one daily token for killing 50 Kornukata. For this one, challenge two, I'll get 20 daily tokens, I guess, for killing Gibnip. So that's a really good mission. I can go kill them, get 20 tokens. That's great. They even tell me where they're at. So if I go and kill those, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get daily tokens. Then I can go up here to token traders. I'm at Twin Peaks, by the way. It's a teleporter right over here. I'm at Twin Peaks. I can go over here, talk to these guys, and trade my tokens in for guns. When it comes to what gun to use, generally what people are going to recommend, and what I'd, be, I'd even recommend, get your daily tokens. You can get those if you're new. If you're under level 10, you can get those by doing gauntlet missions. Run the gauntlet every day, get your daily tokens, and then you can come and buy lower level guns and use those guns when you're hunting. So let me see what am I, I was looking at. Laser rifles, here you got laser pistols. Um, some really good ones I've seen a lot of people using. Was this one? Yeah, this is a good one. So it's a level three gun. So if you're a little bit lower level, maybe level six, perfect gun for you. 
Next up, you've got the McCorp Callus 2. Again, this is level four. Like you can just sort of go through this list, okay? Like this, this is a pretty decent way of doing things. You can get all the way up to level 13. Obviously the efficiency isn't great on these guns, but it's what a lot of people recommend because daily tokens, you can get those while you're skilling up anyways. So why not just use them to get some guns? Uh, also, let, let me go back and just look at the cost here because that does matter too to a lot of people. Sorry about that. I just completely spaced on that one. Um, yeah, so if you look at the cost, it is 20 daily tokens for something like this, right? So this is another gun. It's a .05 gun. This is another one that's pretty good to use. If you're going to something like this, it's 40 daily tokens. So you can, you can get the tokens pretty easily and get guns like that. And that's a great way to sort of go gun to gun. A lot of people have even said that if you do everything right, you're never going to have to go to the auction house when you're going through those levels. Once you get to a high enough level or you feel like, hey, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to start buying my guns. You can go to the auction house. And here you're going to find for rifles, sort of my favorite series of rifles. Let me find the auctioneer. It takes them a little bit to load, unfortunately. There we go which would be the LR like dash whatever weapons. You can see I'm using an LR dash 20 right now and 25 is what I'm going for. Uh, so they go all the way up to 70. You can see some of the higher level guns. Ooh, let me see, those are blueprints. Let's go down. Some of the higher level LR guns like the LR 35 are 113%, you got an LR 40. Let's keep going down this list here. You got a lot of them. So you got an LR 15 here, so that's a little bit lower level and this is gonna be for someone who's level 15. But you see that 62.8 efficiency is really nice, especially selling at 120%, that's not too bad. So if you're, you know, level 20, this might be the gun for you. Again, I'm not 100% sure on the stats, just play it by ear. And here you've got the level 10 version, and this would be when I'd recommend switching over to LR guns once you're either maxed or close to maxed out on this. So I'd start checking the stats, checking the skills once you're maybe level 15. Um, and up until then, you're going to be able to go off of those token traders. So if you're looking for pistols, sort of the same thing applies. There's a, I think it's called the LP dash. That would be the laser pistol version of the LR. Um, here you can see an LP dash 20. Let's check the stats on that. 63.2% still is really great uh, efficiency. And here you can see just sort of the skills. So if you notice, I am not maxed out here on this uh I'm not even close to maxed out on hit, but on damaged I am because I've done all that rifle work. So my damage is good, but my hit isn't because I don't use a pistol much. And my hit ability and critical hit ability are at zero. That is a, a definite no, do not use that. But you can check it, play it by ear, see what's going on. If your hit ability is too low, you're going to miss more shots. So you're still wasting PEDs. Don't think that you're uh, being sneaky if you've got that damage maxed out, but not your hit. Um, so yeah, that's my recommendation as far as rifles and pistols go. As far as melee weapons, power fists, or um, <laughs> mind force goes, mind, my, yeah, mind, mind force, I'm not 100% sure what to do. That is not something I could recommend. I know starting off the trade terminal is a great place to go. Go here, get all your basic guns, and then from there you can just sort of figure things out as you go. If you're wondering what guns to upgrade, if you're confused, feel free to come on to my Discord channel. There's a link down below. There are a ton of people on there that are gonna help you out. And yeah, I think, oh, okay. One more thing to cover, healing. So for healing, there's the Vivo T1A. That's a healer that you're gonna buy from the trade terminal. As soon as you can, at Camp Icarus, run the gauntlet missions. After that, you're gonna be getting a Vivo S10. This is unlimited, you can heal it up, and it's extremely efficient. It cannot be traded, but it's pretty easy to get. So if we go, I'll show you guys how to get this now. If we go to Camp Icarus, that's gonna be where you use it. And my thing is, like most players are never really gonna to need to get anything crazier than that S10, or they shouldn't be, because the way it works when you're hunting, Hunting with no armor and never healing, that is the cheapest way to hunt. So if you can kill a mob without healing or anything like that, that's super cheap, super good. You're doing awesome. That's max efficiency. If you're using amps and making everything right, that is maximum efficiency. Like you cannot beat that. Some players though are gonna wanna take on higher level mobs, me included. For those, you're gonna need armor. If you're using armor and not healing, again, that's more efficient than if you're healing and not using armor. So the first thing you wanna do is put on armor. After that, the way you wanna play is you wanna be shooting, having armor, 
and after you kill a mob, you have to heal. Now, the worst case scenario, the most inefficient, the way that you're going to waste the most PEDs, is if you're shooting at a mob in in between, like while you're in the process of killing it, you have to heal, and then you have to start shooting again. That gives that mob, that monster, time to heal on its own. Everybody, every player has a natural regen, so um, when you take that break to heal yourself up, that monster gains a little bit of HP back. It's going to be all that much harder for you to kill, and it means that you're going to have to do more damage to it to get that kill. So that is the worst case scenario. Avoid that at all costs if you can. Obviously, it's not always possible, but it is what it is, right? Um, if, if you have to heal once in a while, it's okay. But if you're shooting a mob, and in general, when you're fighting it, you're always stopping to heal mid-fight, that's, that's a bad situation. If you're shooting a mob, and after killing it, you always have to heal. Again, you're wasting a bit of money. It is what it is. And if you're shooting a mob, you've got armor on, you never have to heal, that's great. If you're shooting a mob, you've got no armor on, and you never have to heal, that is even better. And again, use amplifiers, everything like that. Get your efficiency as high as possible because damage per PEC matters because that's how fast you kill a mob. That doesn't give it any time to heal up. But the other thing that matters is um, PEC damage. Per, yeah, or damage per PEC. That's, yeah, it, sorry. Damage per minute. That matters because that's how fast you can kill it. But damage per PEC, that matters a lot too because if you have a high damage per PEC, that means that you're saving a lot of money when you're shooting. And the name of the game, at least the way I think it should be played, is you try and get that efficiency, the damage that you're doing per PEC as high as possible. And the higher you have that, the more likely you are to make money when you're hunting. So here you go. This is how you get the gauntlet. Go here, do stage one. You've got to be in a team to do that. But there's plenty of people always looking for a team out here. So that's that shouldn't be too bad. Um, and one other strategy, this is something that's a little bit more advanced. If you're a new player, this probably isn't going to work. If you're a mid-level player, you should be doing this. If you have a high enough PED stack, you can keep all the stuff that you loot in storage. So shrapnel, that's something that you're going to loot from mobs. That's something that you want to convert. It converts to universal ammo, and that is going to be super helpful because if you have universal ammo, you get that at a 99% conversion rate. So you're saving 1% when you convert from shrapnel to universal ammo compared to buying something from the TT. That's also why strong boxes are better to do when you're trying to deposit than just depositing straight money. Um, here's another thing that I do, though. I save everything that I loot up, every... Every, basically every material and every mine resource, I save it because a lot of it has an extra percent markup. So let's say wool, right? I've got 23 PEDs of that. I can sell it for 117%. That is a very high markup. That's a very good price. 23 PEDs, that's sort of on the limit. And I'll, uh, I'm, I'm just going to list it just to show you guys how this works. If I save it up, basically every hunting run, I may be spending 50 PEDs. I'm getting one or two PEDs of, of wool. After 20 or 30 hunting runs, I've got enough wool that now I can put it on auction and list it for 116% and make an extra, basically, four PEDs. The auction fee is 50 PECs per listing plus a percentage of that markup that you're making. So since you're always paying 50 PECs, if I only had one wool to sell, it wouldn't be worth selling. If I had one wool, we can, we'll play this out. If I have one wool, this is how it's gonna work. I put this in auction. 500% already, that's ridiculous. Even if I had one PED, I'd be asking too much, right? But when I have a lot of it, when I have a stack of it, I can sell it for a little bit more. And this is ideal because it means that now I can get extra markup for it. So I'm gonna put it for sale, 116%. Also, one thing I should be doing, and I just sort of ran through this, is checking wool, seeing what the average buyout is and trying to match, like trying to make mine as close as possible. So you can see there's fine wool, there's wool thread, here we've got plain old wool, someone selling for 121%. Um, maybe I sold a little bit too low. I think I might have sold a little bit too low, but it is what it is. Um, so that's how it goes, right? Mine probably sold automatically. Yeah, see, someone has a buyout on it. So because I was a little bit stupid, because I didn't check, I actually lost money on this one. If you go to the material, if you go to, where do we have it? Well, basically, if you find where wool's listed, you can go there and you can check orders. And what you're going to find is every now and then someone has an order out for something and by match, then you can just get that percent right off the bat. Someone obviously had an order out for wool. I didn't check. I sold it. And that was a bad call on my part. But you guys can learn from that mistake, hopefully. 
All right, so there we go. Auction everything off, stack everything up. Obviously, if it comes down to it and you need PEDs, you can sell stuff to a trade terminal or you can sell it to a trader. Find traders. You can either go to my Discord. There's people that are on there in the trading channel buying and selling stuff. Or you can go to Entropia Form or you can go to a global trading chat and ask. Or you can also, if you go to Rookie and you just ask, hey, what's the like, Calypso trade channel? I think it's like Cali Trade people will tell you what it is and then you can go there now real quick let me just kill one mob so i can show you the shrapnel you're gonna see that i'm doing a lot of damage to this guy a little too much damage this is actually pretty uneco because i've got a lot of like extra damage that i'm doing but here we go we got some shrapnel so back click on that convert it to ammo if i sold the shrapnel to the trade terminal and then I bought the ammo, I'd be losing about 1% on that. So always try and convert to ammo if you can. Also, that universal ammo can be used in any gun, whereas otherwise you've got BLP and laser ammo. BLP for BLP guns, laser for laser guns. It doesn't matter if it's a pistol or a ranged white rifle. Some melee weapons do take ammo too. You've got to check that. Um, and I think that's it. I think that covers it. I think that is the guide to hunting in Entropia Universe. That's the guide to beginner hunting, eco hunting, and everything. You've got your armor upgrades, your sort of how you want to go about that. You've got your gun list, how you want to go about that. I've gave, given you a list for pistols and everything like that. I, you guys have everything you need to succeed at this point. I made a 40-minute video, and hopefully, hopefully I was able to explain everything in a clear enough way that you guys can do a good job and... Make some money. Have some fun playing Entropia Universe. Even if you don't make money, your money's going to go farther, hopefully. And that means that you're going to have more fun. So here's the thing. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button. They take quite a, quite a bit of time to make. I've got to sort of come up with what I'm going to say. Then I've got to say it, and then we've got to like go from there, right? But um, yeah, 40 minutes. This went a little bit longer than I expected. I'm sorry for that, but there is a lot to cover, and hopefully I was able to cover it. I'm Serial Overdrive. I do a ton of Entropia Universe stuff, so feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys like the video. And uh, comments, questions, everything like that's welcome down below. I do have a Discord. You can go there to ask a lot of questions. That's a great way to ask questions. I also have Twitter, another way to ask me questions. And I have Twitch. So if you ever want to catch me when I'm playing live, you can go there. I don't stream all the time, but I do stream every now and then. Also, shout out to all, there's a bunch of other Entropia Universe YouTubers out there. Those of you guys who are Entropia Universe YouTubers, feel free to comment down below. Um, I'm not going to list them off. I've listed them off in other videos, but if they comment down below, you guys should be able to see it and go there. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have had a great start to 2020, and those of you guys who are watching in the future, in the far future, um, tell me how 2021, 2022, and beyond is. So until next time, peace.